This is my beginner's guide on redstone. Please note before watching that this tutorial is designed for people with very little or no knowledge with redstone. In this video we will be focusing on the basic functions of all redstone related items and blocks. If you are already a medium or advanced level with redstone then this tutorial is probably not for you. Now, after that deeply depressing monotoned voice, let's get back to the good old stuff. This is, as I'm sure you know, redstone dust, the on state and the off state. Now, you watch 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then it stops. Redstone can only be powered for 15 blocks and then it will stop. So, yeah, make sure you keep out of that. You can use repeaters, but we're going to get to that in a different episode. Also, when you're placing a, when it's a bit like a torch. When placing a block on top of it, it appears above it like that, and water will destroy redstone. So you need to watch out for that as well. Now, normally redstone parts are either inputs or outputs, but for the sake of the tutorial, we're just going to call them senders and receivers. Senders send power, and receivers receive power. And these are the senders. So we have the button, which stays on for about a second after you push it and that cannot be placed on the top of the box, it needs to be placed on the side. The lever, which toggles on for, for how long you leave it till, and then toggles back off. So on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, okay! Moving on, we have the two uh, pressure plates, the wooden pressure plate and the stone pressure plate. Now you can both see they have around the same delay time, and they work similar to the bus, and except you don't push it, well, stand on it, but you can see something here, when I put blocks on top of this, the wooden pressure plate stays on, but the stone pressure plate doesn't, and it's because the stone pressure plate needs an actual person or a mob, such as a pig or a creeper, to stand on it, for it to actually be powered. And this also applies for minecarts, so an empty minecart will turn on the wooden pressure plate, but it will not turn on the stone pressure plate. If it had a person in it, it would turn on the stone pressure plate. So you can, you can use that for, like, if your cart runs away, you can make it turn around, and I will kill you, sheep. Now, you've seen the senders, and these are the receivers. Now, these actually, when they, they react to power. So when some redstone next to them is turned on, they do something. And so to start off with, we have the note block, which is recently added in the 1.2 update. And when powered, it makes a note. And depending on the block below it, it makes a different type of note. So if it's a wooden block below this pig, I will kill you just like the sheep. If you have a different block below it, then it will make a different type of sound. So you can experiment with that. Then we have the minecart tracks. And in when there's like a T-junction, like this, and it powers, it will switch. So you can see how it flips back because the power goes back to to null because it's a button. And then the dispenser, which was also added in the 1.2 update, which dispenses blocks. At the moment I just have dirt in it. So every time I click the button it dispenses a piece of dirt. And now we have the two doors. The wooden door and the iron door. There we go. Now, the difference between these is I can open this one with my hand, just going through the imaginary door frame, whereas this one I cannot. This one needs redstone power to open, like that. And this one can use redstone, but you can also use your hand. And finally, everybody's favourite, TNT, placed away from the rest for obvious reasons. When clicks, it's a little bit like a creeper, except there's no stopping it. Goodbye. So the keen people may have noticed that I haven't actually said anything about the redstone torch yet, and that's because I've been talking about senders and receivers. It's both. In this case, it's a sender, and you can see that its default state is on, and then it sends power to adjacent blocks like this. But here's a case where it does both. This button powers this redstone, which what happens is this reacts to this and turns off. So it does react to senders, so it's a receiver as well as a sender for the, you know, we're just using these terms because it's easier. But when the base, or when the block that it's on is powered, like this, it turns off. See how it goes off? And then this, which it was sending power to, turns off, because whatever it's sending is the state that, you know, your torch is on. 
thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and learned something. If you didn't really know in any of the basics about redstone, well, hopefully you do now. In the next episode, we'll be looking at logic gates like the very simple not gate, which is this, or the inverter gate, the repeater gate right here, and there's the and gate as well, and we'll get to that sound in a second. This is the and gate, and we'll also look at some other gates, and this is my neon light love heart for you guys. So yeah, thumbs up, come on. Hope, yeah, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.